I'm Dr. Shoykot. Today I'll discuss about ASD, atrial septal defect. In this video, I'll discuss about the types of ASD with embryological explanation and clinical findings. So, what is ASD? So, this is a schematic diagram of the heart. Here there is right atrium, there is left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle. So ASD is a defect in the interatrial septum. Simply a hole in the wall between two atria is called atrial septal defect. So in between right atrium and left atrium there is an interatrial septum and in this interatrial septum if there is any defect if there is any hole or if there is any opening then it becomes an ASD. Hole can vary in size and most of the time this hole closes on its own if not then it becomes an ASD. When fetus develops during the pregnancy normally there are several openings in this interatrial septum. If any of them does not close and exist then it becomes an ASD. So ASD can be diagnosed during pregnancy or it may be diagnosed when the baby is born and most of the time the ASD is diagnosed in early adulthood or may remain undiagnosed throughout the life. Now the types of ASD. There are several types of ASD but three are major. So there are three major types of ASD, ostium secundum ASD, ostium primum ASD and sinus venosa ASD. So among these three types of ASD, ostium secundum ASD is common. So why ostium secundum ASD is common? It will be clear when I'll discuss about its embryological explanation. So to understand the types of ASD, we need to see from its embryological point of view. So let's see.
So this is the primitive heart tube at day 23. Here is truncus arteriosus, bulbus cordis, primitive ventricle, primitive atrium, and sinus venosus, and here is AV canal. And at day 23, cardiac looping and bending starts, and it completes at day 28. So whenever it rotates in this direction, so this sinus venosus is common atrium, then there is ventricle, bulbus cordis, truncus arteriosus. So, if we take a longitudinal section of this view, we'll get a figure like this. So this is the longitudinal section view of this figure. This one is common atrium and this one is common ventricle. So this is the endocardial cushion. What is endocardial cushion? Endocardial cushion is nothing but the mass of extracellular matrix with proliferating cells which takes part in the formation of septum. So during the development of the septum, the first septum which grows is septum primum. So sep the growth of septum primum starts from the roof of the common atrium. So in this direction, it keeps on growing, keeps on growing, keeps on growing. Before the full growth of the septum primum, there is a opening between the lower rim of the septum primum and endocardial cushion. This is called ostium primum. So this is septum primum. And before the full growth of the septum primum, there is a opening in between this endocardial cushion and septum primum that is called ostium primum. Due to any reason, if this ostium primum does not close and exist, then it becomes ostium primum ASD. Now, suppose the growth of septum primum is completed but before full completion of the growth of septum primum cell death produces some perforations in the upper portion of the septum primum combinedly all these perforations may produce an opening which is called ostium secundum so before the full completion of this septum primum there is cell death in the upper portion of this septum primum and combinedly all these perforations may produce a, an opening which is called ostium secundum due to any reason if this ostium secundum does not close and exist then it becomes ostium secundum asd now This is septum primum then one more septum develops from the roof of the common atrium that is septum secundum then there is sinus venosus so this sinus venosus this is the area of sinus venosus it has two horns one is left horn another one is right horn the left horn give rise to the coronary sinus and so in this area of sinus venosus if there is any defect then it is called sinus venosus defect again this sinus venosus defect is two types superior and inferior types so what is superior sinus venosus defect when sinus venosus defect when sinus venosus defect includes superior vena cava then it is called superior sinus venosus type of asd and when any defect includes the inferior vena cava then it is called inferior type of sinus venosus asd this is all about the embryological explanation for understanding the types of asd so this is the part one of asd in my next video i'll continue with the pathophysiology clinical features investigation and treatment of asd hope you like this video give your feedback in the comments below and please subscribe this channel for next videos Thank you.